My favorite is the accent in West Virginia. I don't know where exactly it is, but they talk like they have a jar full of words, and there's like a little hole in the bottom, and they got to shake the words out. Like, we were down there the other day. That's my favorite. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Creative Businessman. Uh, today's episode, we have Seth Payne on with us. He's our new newest team member. He's a... Uh, our producer slash editor, and uh, he's doing a great job. We really enjoy having him in the studio. He's a great guy. Uh, we had a fun conversation. I think you guys will enjoy it. Uh, if you enjoy the show, be sure to like and subscribe. We really appreciate your support. And here you go. So what's up, Seth? What you doing, big guy? It's weird sitting right here. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so in case everyone doesn't know, Seth's our new producer in the studio and editor. And uh, extraordinaire, he's doing a great job. Extraordinaire. Thanks. Yeah, love having you on the team, man. I think so. Yeah, man. I like being part of the team. I think, I think, uh, you know, I think with the direction and everything that we got going on, I feel like it feels right. It feels right. It's feels a good, good fit. It's a good fit, yeah. yeah. I also feel like Seth is really important for uh, breaking West Virginia stereotypes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let's not get too far ahead so, of us. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you from, is that, uh, is that your cousin or your wife? Uh, uh, yeah. That one's new. That one's new. No, uh <laughs> Uh, I'm from Winfield, West Virginia. Yeah, so I didn't grow up in like the hill hills. I mean, I was in like a suburb area, I guess. Uh, but yeah. I still did country boy activity. But I would. No one was ever like, ah, Seth's in the woods. You know, you right. know Seth. He's always in the woods. <laughs> but like, I would do stuff like that. But I wasn't like country boy. My bro, my older brother, maybe a little more. So yeah. he's got like F one fifty diesel. <laughs> but I mean, I've rode in the back of pickup trucks up dirt roads before so right i've earned my stripes i guess but Winfield's i'm not right like, on the main highway there right? yeah yeah, yeah so. it's like i'm like an hour away from i was like an hour away from charleston hour away from huntington so i mean yeah so you're connected to society yeah civilization yeah. yeah uh last i checked i think winfield only had like two thousand people in it but i mean like we were close to other towns and everything right. it wasn't like we were isolated yeah, but yeah. just a small number of people there like me and Maisie were watching a documentary the other day and it was like, he lived in a small town with 15,000 people. And we were just like, <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Is she from the same area? She's from Huntington. That's okay. how we met uh, in Huntington on, on Tinder. But I mean, like, when I, I was in Huntington. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it worked. I mean, she was, my only, she was my only Tinder date. Well, plus you grew up with the internet, too. Yeah. It's a big difference. Yeah. I mean, when we were growing up, did you not, did you not used to... Th- go like don't you wish there was like some symbol or something or some shirt that women would wear that you just knew like hey i'm available hey i'm looking right and i think that's what tinder is it's like yeah it, it seems like you're cutting through all the you're cutting through yeah. all the formalities yeah. cut out the middle man you know because back back in the day i just would you just flirt with everybody right you can't do that today you can you can get sued but you know you just flirt with everybody and the ones that were receptive hey you know that that's the ones you go <laughs> yeah <laughs> not everybody's going to be on board i guess yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, a yeah. different dynamic now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a little less uh i think it's less uh i think it's less invasive yeah <laughs> cuz uh, yeah i'm open to be talked to right and in yeah. some places it's like oh i actually have a boyfriend so yeah. now pretty soon you'll have ar glasses and people could have like a different colored emoji or something above their head or that's true or yeah. aura maybe that lets you know that they're available or yeah not and i available. wasn't really like a, a meet girls at bar guy like i just want to i, I just want to play darts and i don't mean this in a negative way but what girl what what girl or guy what type of girl or guy are you really going to meet at the bar that lives at the bar exactly not the one time you guys both went out it's a friday night but like if you're religiously going to bars to pick up girls or your girl going to bars to pick up guys what kind of guy are you getting yeah Someone, a bar fly. Uh, I mean, yeah. like pretty. I mean, during our uh, bar days, it was just normal people. That's, we all went out to bars. Yeah, and clubs my, and stuff. my wife's never been to a bar ever. Well, you, you have a, uh, yeah. My wife's dad owns a bar, so yeah, yeah. We're, we were there a lot. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree. I'm just saying, like, your wife's dad owns a bar. My wife's dad. Yeah, your father-in-law. Your father-in-law. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. That's that West Virginia coming out right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we actually watched a documentary last night, me and Maisie, about uh, breaking Appalachian stereotypes. So that's funny. Uh. <laughs> In preparation for this, I was getting prepped. There so. you go. There you go. <laughs> well, technically, this is still Appalachia too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's actually Appalachia. Appalachia. Yeah, if you say Appalachia, there's a big divide. Oh. People say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Appalachia. We say it. I threw an apple at you. Uh, oh. so, yeah, Appalachia. It's just like, and it, like if someone hears you say that, they're like, nah, they, they don't know us. They're not <laughs> <laughs> so, 
But you grew up. You grew up in. Yeah, a small town. Yeah. 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 Kind of and, same thing. And it's uh, you know, where we grew up, there's multiple dialects of. Yeah. Southern English. Yeah. Too. yeah. That's my favorite. That's his nice way of saying uh, poor white trash redneck. Uh, well, there's that, and there's clearly spoken there is. people. Yeah, my yeah. favorite is the accent in West Virginia. I don't know where exactly it is, but they talk like they have a jar full of words, and there's like a little hole in the bottom, and they got to shake the words out. Like, we were down there the other day. That's my favorite. I don't know where exactly that's from. It could be like Boone County or whatever, but my dad would know. He knows all about like the accents and everything around there. So Sometimes I feel like my words get jumbled and they try to come out at, you know, simultaneously. Yeah. yeah it's funny. A I start to sound like my dad a lot, too. So. A lot That's of something that happens as you get older. It's yeah. strange. Yeah. A lot of our families in, like, uh, Boone, Lenore, Deep Gap, like, like the mountains of North Carolina, and there's a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. That, that, that's my favorite, like, voices and accents, dialects. It's always interesting to me. It's fascinating. So, yeah. yeah. But I'm starting to sound like my dad. Like, Maisie said something the other day, and I said, Hua! I'm <coughs> why? <laughs> That's funny. I don't know why it happens. So he's got the whoa. Yeah, why? I don't want to fool with it. That's his favorite thing. If he doesn't want to mess with it, I don't want to fool with it. That's funny. So, uh, that's good. Interesting. Um, where did you? Uh, you went, where did you go to college at? And what did went you to went to Marshall. Uh, go herd. Um, I went to Marshall for uh, journalism. Uh, uh, my degree was radio and television production management. Yeah. So okay. I learned how to like run a radio station, I guess, or a TV station. And, uh, then I uh, got an internship, uh, at WSAZ news channel three, um, right out of college and then started producing. And what and, city uh, is this? This is Huntington. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, Journalism basically is what I what I went to school for. How so. long did you know you wanted to go into that field? I didn't really want to until in high school. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I wanted to be like a voice actor or something. I didn't okay. know or like a WWE announcer because I always thought that was funny. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really care in high school. I didn't really care about grades or anything. And then I went to uh, when I graduated. I went to West Virginia State. And that I'd commuted, and all my friends went to Marshall, and I was like, I want to go to school with all my friends. Like, I hated it there. And it's a fine school, but I hated it because none of my friends went there, and I was 18. Yeah. So um, I had a couple of friends who uh, were in journalism. My bro oldest brother was in journalism, too. So, And I wanted to do something with writing and TV and telling stories. Right. And I was like, well, I'll do that. That's kind of close yeah. enough, right? And then I actually ended up liking it when I transferred – from state to Marshall, um, and then I like did stuff at a radio station there, did stuff with news, and I actually really liked it. And the internship made me like, oh wait, I want to, you know, do this every day. Cool. Uh, it was cool going around talking to people and hearing I'm sure stories you've and telling creative, those right? You've yeah, been yeah, yeah. When uh, when you were growing up or when you were a kid, what what type of art forms did you like? Like, what were you into? Video. Okay. Yeah, I remember like uh, the first time I did stuff with video was like me and my friends. I don't know. We were like in second grade or whatever. My buddy had like a camcorder, and we would do like these sh little things where I'd ha I get his little brother's like stuffed animals and like act out these things, and then we would all just laugh the whole time, and it was really fun. And then we'd go back and watch them and still laugh. And I was like, okay, I get, <laughs> I get it, yeah. I get this. I mean, and I'm was sure. That a, was that a high eight camcorder? Or was that the the first stages of digital? Uh, probably first stages of digital. I don't okay. think that was that was kind of on its way out yeah. whenever we were That's getting cool. around that age. So, yeah. Yeah, so many more possibilities for kids today with technology. It's so advanced. You can produce really nice things with a relatively low budget. Yeah, for or sure. Or no budget. Yeah. I mean, with a, just your phone is a great camera. Yeah. I mean, uh, you, there's like free apps you can get on your phone and do all that kinds of stuff. It's yeah. a, that's how I got my last job. I was at Spectrum News. And then they laid us all off, uh, all the producers off in Greensboro. And then uh, I wanted to get back into video. I was a producer, so I was writing. But I wanted to get back in video because I started out as a ph photographer, and I really liked that. Um, and uh, they let us all go, and I was looking for another job in video. And I didn't have editing software because my laptop crapped out. Uh -huh. And I didn't have, like, anything to show other than what I did, like, years ago. And then they said, hey, make us a video. 
uh, and we'll see how you do use this stuff and we'll see if we'll like it. So I was like, I didn't want to say like, well, my computer's broke. I can't. <laughs> so I just like, I was just like, yeah, sure. I can do that. And got like an app on my phone and did it. And they're like, we love it. You're hired. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So awesome. That's awesome. yeah, that's yeah, how I got cool. a job using my phone. So. <laughs> Which is crazy that you can edit videos on your phone now. Yeah. So it used to take so much processing power to edit a video. Yeah. And now you can edit, I guess you could probably edit 4K videos on your phone, right? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Yeah. With the, uh, I think I have the iPhone 13, something like that. Yeah. Which mom tried to talk me out of buying, but mom, that got me a job, so. <laughs> yeah. That was a good choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although there's some issues with the 13. Oh, really? Yeah, what I know, like, the uh, facial face, recognition. Face yeah. recognitions. Oh, I haven't had that. His has been broke for a while, my, apparently, a little bit, yeah. right? And then mine just crapped out, like, maybe yeah. in the last week. Oh. oh. Apparently, they changed the connector or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. Have you tried yeah. blowing in it? <laughs> <laughs> like, shaking it, blowing in oh, it? He, you can actually he, you can hit he beats on his. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I, also, yeah, you can. I thought he was frustrated, right? So, for, like, the last maybe two weeks, he'd just been beating on his phone occasionally. Like, ah. Must be a bad text or something, right? And <laughs> no, he's trying to fix it. And then mine broke, and he goes, "Yeah, that's why I've been banging on mine. Mm. It, sometimes it works. <laughs> yeah, if you tap it, it'll <laughs> sometimes reconnect." Is that where uh, they tried to fix it, where they could do it with masks on? Because uh, I know that that, that update, I, I did not uh, set mine up, but that update I just processed. But I think my, mine broke before that. Yeah, I'm sure this is a software update. But yeah, this is just a hardware issue. There's like a bad connection, like they change the connectors, and it's, it, it comes loose. Mm. So. And, and I could switch it out, but by the time I, I mean, it, I think it takes like two weeks to get it fixed or something. And then there's a new one coming out in a few months. Yeah, there plus, always is. <laughs> plus, switching to a new phone, you have to update all your apps and yeah. put in all your passwords. It's just kind of a headache. So Yeah, the passwords thing type is in pain in the pain ass. Yeah. yeah. There's like a new one every month, and then yours starts getting worse and worse and worse and worse. So Yeah, yeah. by design. I oh, yeah. <laughs> it's planned obsolescence, I think, is the yeah. term. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they've uh, actually intentionally decommissioned some of the older iPhones now. Really? Like, they don't work anymore. Mm. Yeah. They don't want people playing Tiny Wings anymore. Is it They're Tiny Wings? Uh -huh. Oh, I guess that's more my <laughs> age group, <laughs> I guess. But I, there was a game that you could only get on. The guy disabled it, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. that's it. But if you kept oh. it and didn't update your phone, oh, you could still play it. So yeah. people sell that specific iPhone yep. without the updates so you can play Tiny Wings. And it's like thousands of dollars. Yeah. It's an okay game. I man. think the guy made a ton of money and then felt bad about it or something. And ended up, isn't that yeah, like yeah. ruined his like life that. or something. He was yeah. like, this is ruining my life. And then... He ruined his life. Yeah, 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 yeah. The money didn't. I mean, it's yeah. what you do with it. So. Yeah. But bizarre yeah. I remember, story. I remember that. I do yeah. remember that story, yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what brought you to North Carolina? Um, Maisie, uh, my fiance. I said wife earlier. She's my yeah. fiance, but we're getting married in September. Well, which it's just is it? easier so, to say wife. So. It's, it's easier <laughs> to say wife. Uh, she got in grad school uh, at UNCG, oh. and uh, I didn't want to do long, long distance, so I was like, oh, I'll go with you. So I found I'm a like job it. at Spectrum. So I couldn't do long distance for sure yeah. at all. It doesn't work. Well, separation creates a lot of opportunity for other things to take place. Yeah. It's like, eh, yeah, might as well. If, if it's meant to be, might as well stick it out. Yeah. I mean, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't even like, oh, I think, you know, we'd drift apart. It'd be like, I'd get bored. Like, <laughs> she went away for like a month to go to Peru and I was just like sitting at my house and I was like, and all my friends went away that summer. I remember it was like, she was in Peru. One of my friends was in Africa. The other one was in Puerto Rico. And I was just sitting there and I was like, <sighs> like there's nothing to do. I was like, I texted her. I was like, I'm going to start throwing rocks at cars. I'm so bored. Like, <laughs> so I'd miss her. So yeah, that's, okay. that's good. My parents weren't thrilled about me moving in with someone though. So oh, uh, religious that, stuff. Yeah, it was a hurdle, but uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> that was something uh that took a lot of courage to work up uh telling my mom i didn't want to make it's funny cry, though so. right the, 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 the sentiment behind that it's like people don't want you living together because we're having sex you're having sex anyway <laughs> so what's, what's, what's it it's well, like I, it's like they're okay if we can pretend you're not yeah but if you're just open about it it's a problem what's uh it's so funny when i told her she was like she knew that we were going to live together, but there was like a little part of her. She was like tearing up and she was like, so are you guys going to get different apartments? And I was like, no, mom, we're not. <laughs> so, yeah, 
but I imagined us like Ricky and Lucy, two different beds like that. Like in <laughs> yeah, I love yeah, Lucy, yeah. so <laughs> I, I understand it because I came from a religious background too. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's bizarre though. So now. Is that why she didn't want you to get the iPhone 13? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's exactly she it. She know what yeah. kind of content you're going to be making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she wants you to get a pager? So. Yeah, a beeper. A beeper. A beeper yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man, see, I never... I've got a religious family, but I never... I guess I just didn't care. Mm-hmm. So, like, I never asked, never questioned it, never... You know, the one thing I, which I respect the hell to my dad for saying this, you know, he's basically like, you can't be a grown man living in my house with another woman, right? Yeah, that's that's what my parents said. They're like, you yeah. can, but like, that's what my that's how my dad said. He's like, you can, but not under my roof. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, I, so I moved out, right? Like, I mean, I respect yeah. the hell to that. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it, it, it makes a lot of sense from that angle. Like, I, I agree. Like, the we're not going to live together. I don't know, man. Like, I'm so weird about this, but how are you supposed to get to know somebody if you don't spend a lot of time with them, right? Mm-hmm. And if, if a girl lives somewhere else and a guy lives somewhere else and you only get them for that hour or two hours or three hours, like you go out on a date, you spend that, that limited confined time, how do you really get to know the person you're with? Like their habits, who they are? Like yeah. I want to experience every holiday, every – every. Oh, you want to be with them when they're at their worst so that you know what the worst is, right? Yeah, for like, sure. God, I mean like – how bad would it be to get surprised? Like you move in with them and they're a slob, <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> like just, it's true. just like terrible habits. <laughs> so I don't know, but I, I, I get it. No, I, uh, I think for me, it was like, I want to see, I want to see what she's like when the computer is not working. Cause yeah. I get, I get pretty mad at that stuff. I, I have kind of a temper a little bit when with uh, computers and stuff, which is weird. Cause that's what I do every day. But when, <laughs> yeah, but like, um, uh, I don't know. I was getting mad at the computer one day, and then I was like, oh, she's going to leave me. She's going to hate this. She's not <laughs> going to like me after this. And then she's still here. So she's only yeah. lost her temper like once since since we've been living together. And it was when the printer wasn't working. <laughs> this is pretty funny. But she was like trying to do something for school, and the printer wasn't working. And I was in the other room. And what I like to do when I'm frustrated like that is like people just leave me alone and let me work through it. So I was in the other room just like, letting her do her thing. And then I heard like this horrible rustling sound and stuff flying all over the place. And then I walked in and I was like, are you okay? And then there were papers flying around her and she was like, I can't get (laughs) anything to work around this house. And then like she stared at me and then we just started laughing. And then it was like, that was pretty funny. That was a cool moment where it was like, this is silly. So So you guys have uh, something in common there. You both get angry at technology. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, for sure. I'd say that's fairly positive though. Yeah, that's good. The printer yeah. remained intact, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Just the paper can, tray. Yeah, yeah, as long as there wasn't like a shattering of glass yeah. and the printer's yeah. out in the yard. <laughs> no, never broke anything. Never broke anything. That's Threatened good. to like, it's all, uh, for some reason I'm always, I'm going to throw you in the creek. Uh, for some reason it's always a body of water because that's what my dad was. It's got to be the biggest fear for a computer though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess because we lived near a creek growing up and dad's like, I'm going to toss this in the creek. So that's how I learned, I guess. <laughs> That's funny. His was cars, though, not computers. So, oh. yeah. yeah. Um, when did you get into stand up? Hmm. July last year. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so coming up on a year. year. Yeah. Okay. Soon. Yeah. But you've you've been writing for a long time, though, right? Yeah, I think uh, I started kind of whenever I moved from West Virginia to North Carolina. There was like a lot happening in West Virginia, like. There was uh, the, the, what we called the hot dog wars, and there was like this hot dog, uh, this guy who went to hot dog stand that was like saying some homophobic and really bad stuff online and like everything like that, and then there was another hot dog place that was like, you know, we we just sell hot dogs, we're cool with everybody, like we don't do anything like that, and everybody was making like jokes and memes and videos and stuff. <laughs> and then I was like, well, I'll write one. It's the homophobic guy with a hot dog stand. It's kind of funny. Right? It's a little on the nose, right? Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> weird. And like, whatever. But uh, And then I was like, I'll, I'll write and do a video on that. And I made it look like Breaking Bad whenever like, he kills Gus. Oh, I and saw that. that. Yeah, yeah that it's like yeah. the season finale or whatever, and he kills Gus. And like, yeah. Gus is like the homophobic hot dog guy. And the other one's uh, uh, Frost Top. Shout out Frost Top. Um, and then people reacted to it pretty well, and it was cool. But I was, like, in a completely different state. But, like, I felt – I had, like, FOMO. Like, I want to be a part of this fun trend <laughs> or whatever. So I started right. writing little things like that and videos. And I did a couple of them, not, like, a lot. But it was cool to, like, start writing and then people noticing it and doing stuff like that. And I was like, hey, I'll 
try stand up too. So, oh yeah, cool. Yeah, just made sense. So, are you are you liking stand up? Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, right now, just my goal is just get up as much as possible. Some some weeks I'm really good at it, and sometimes I'm not. So, yeah. But yeah, uh, a big part of it too was just uh, meeting people. Because I mean, me and Maisie moved here twenty twenty nineteen, and then we had six normal months. Yeah. And we were meeting people, and it was cool. And then everything shut down. And it's like we don't know anybody. Yeah. And then it was starting to ease up. And then I was like, oh, I'll try stand up and just meet people, make connections and friends. And that's how I got this job. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, what Evan was talking about moving to LA. Moved to LA right before the quarantine, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was, I mean, I think it was like March 2020 or, or whatever it was. Right at it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a brutal. Yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah. And especially, I mean, it probably worked out going from. I'd rather be in L.A. than New York, I think, during well, yeah. that time, too. But, yeah, it's wild not getting to know anybody. Right, yeah. Strange. I, it wasn't too isolating here. It was for a few months. but A little bit, yeah. Um, but we had we had neighbors that we were friends with. That's good. Right across the hall, so that was cool. That was cool. And they were, like, right around our age or our age. So Plus, cool. here you can you can go out in the wilderness, go out, you know, hike and yeah. do get out in nature and do things. Yeah, I would go to uh, – uh, uh, the military, the battleground, oh, some yeah, Revolutionary yeah. War battle Revolutionary happened. Meals, that area? No, no it's up, up battleground, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's the park that were where a battle happened. It's uh, where yeah. Nathaniel Green got his ass whooped. So that's I have why some they friends named the that live in that area. Yeah. yeah, so I would walk around there a lot during quarantine. Near so. the science center. Yeah, yeah, kind of near yeah. there. Yeah. I think you could go through there and then cut through the science center. I would jog through there a lot. I hike I up I that way, anymore. like further up. In Summerfield, there's some really good hiking trails. Oh, okay. Around like uh, Lake Brant and all that area. Yeah, I need to start uh, running again. Really pretty area. Uh, I mean, it's not. Someone <laughs> mowing on the roof. <laughs> Landscapers are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're on the roof with leaf blowing. <laughs> I hope not. So, what do you? Uh, what what kind of hobbies do you like to do, man? Uh. Uh, I was thinking the other day, like I was editing a video and I was like, I'm going to take a break. And then I got on my phone and started editing a video for my friends. And I was like, I need to find more hobbies because like, <laughs> this is all I do. Well, it's uh, kinda, it's, when you enjoy the stuff that you do professionally, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of like you don't need a hobby. Yeah. Or it makes it a lot better. Yeah. Um, I like, uh, movies probably oh, movies, yeah. video games. Um, what's your go-to video game? Go to video game. I know that's seasonal. Uh, it depends on the time. Yeah. Of the, year. <laughs> uh, the one I played the most mm, growing up was probably Crash Bandicoot. I loved that one. Oh, yeah. I, remember that I still have like the PS1 versions of that and everything. That was my favorite. It's probably the one I played the most, even like throughout. Like I would revisit it all the time. It's yeah. pretty fun. What's your favorite movie? Oh, it changes a lot. Do you have uh, one that's like nostalgic to you? Or? Yeah, one for me that I like a lot, um, that I watch more than any of the other ones, probably is Raising Arizona. Oh, I love that movie. I love that it's one. It's movie. just so fun, and it's got like a lot of. I really like uh, um, Sam Raimi, and I like Evil Dead, and it's kind of got influences from that, oh. and you can see in it. So that's kind of cool, and it's just silly, and I like the Coen Brothers, and, yeah. and Nick Cage is one of my favorites, so I like that one a lot. So, so Seth's an old soul. He likes stuff that's before his time. Y- yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> So, yeah, that's my favorite. It changes a lot. I have, like, top five. I think that one's my number one. Second one's called uh, Stray Dog. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, Akira Kurosawa. I think I said his name right. I've never heard anyone actually say it. Uh, it's like a Japanese noir, like, detective okay. thing. It's really cool. I like that one a lot. So it's kind of weird to go from Coen Brothers to, like, that. There, but <laughs> Wasn't there a big – there was a big uh, anime film back in the – Early, Akira? Early 90s, Akira, yeah, Akira. that was freaking yeah. sweet. I love that one. Yeah. That was really good. Not not big in anime, but that was good. Yeah, I'm starting yeah. to get into anime. I never thought I would. Like high school, I was like, ah, that's lame. It's really like, popular right now. Yeah, like the kids who sit yeah. on the floor in the cafeteria watch that. I'm not watching that. <laughs> it's one of my favorites now. So interesting. Yeah. There's a uh, there's a shop right down the road from here. 
What's the name of it? It's like a little. They do. You're here to promote my my competition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, like a little sushi spot. Uh, um, literally, you turn out, go down, and it's, and it, it's a guy that came from Japan. Is it Toshi's Cafe? Toshi's Cafe. Oh, yeah, I yeah. eat there every day. Oh yeah, the same. <laughs> man, I, like, that's yeah. it's. A, I, I love the background and the story and everything. So yeah, I used to eat there all the time. It's awesome. Yeah, they're, they're actually in the credits of my first episode really oh, yeah awesome. i gave him a special thanks because we would get uh, just every day we're just like you want to get something to eat he's like yeah they've, got all, they've yeah. got all the authentic books and stuff mm-hmm. on the walls but yeah i i in like 2016 17 18 ate there all the time so there's so many different things so yeah. good yeah. you should go there after the episode yeah i probably am so. <laughs> uh, turkey yeah. turkey club is my go-to there oh uh, i uh it's one of my favorite spots, but but uh, my brother's really, really uh, one of my brothers is really into anime, and you know he he like he likes all the authentic Japanese. Like he orders online and gets authentic food, authentic candies. And oh wow, yeah, yeah. So it's pretty cool. I like those little uh, pear flavored ones or whatever. Yeah, I like to eat those, but I can't keep them at the house because Maisie says they smell like cat pee. <laughs> <laughs> you should check out. Okay. Uh, we we've got a bunch of that stuff at the comic book store now. Yeah. Oh, it might be melon flavored. So. Uh, you have a lot of Japanese candies and stuff now. Yeah, yeah. I I I'm starting to get into it. I I watched like the ones everybody watches, like Cowboy Bebop, uh, Evangelion, and stuff like that. But I haven't watched like all the newer ones. Yeah. Right. So have you been by uh, Neil's comic book store? Yeah, yeah. yeah that we had that show there. That one. That yeah. was the first time I was there. That show. Yeah, yeah. It was a really right. fun show. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. I like the giant Hulk in there. Yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. I feel like I need to buy that Hulk. You can. It's for sale. <laughs> I need to buy it. I, need, I don't know where I'm going to put it, but I want it. Hey, put it right put over it, here. Put it right over we, there. Oh, we do need awesome more space in there. It takes up a lot of space. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is the Hulk. Yeah, we yeah. got a lobby. <laughs> <laughs> we, we get in the store like that's one of the things. Like we need more space. Yeah. And every time we need more space, we look at that, that thing. <laughs> like, God, it takes up so much well, more now space. You, now you shoot Daniel a text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Thinking, now I'm thinking about it. We need to like that. mount it to the front of the building outside. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. that would be awesome. Put it on the top and we'll have like lights here. on it. Somebody would destroy it. They would. Some throw rocks at it. Yeah, yeah shoot it or something. I don't know. <laughs> People are crazy. Yeah, they are. So what? What are you? Uh, what are you passionate about? So. Oh, <laughs> what am I passionate about? <sighs> I uh, I want to edit movies at some point. I, w- oh. I was watching, I was literally, we were talking about Batman. I was watching it with Maisie and at the credits, I was like, how cool would it be to see edited by Seth Payne up there and beside her? So, so I guess movie, kind of a, yeah, editing and movies kind of coming together like that. I'd like to edit a movie sometime. I'd, or, like, uh, to, I'd like to shoot a movie. Sometime. Yeah. 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 I, I just want to help pay for one. <laughs> yeah, what we'll uh, yeah. Are we... Is this happening? Is this happening? I'm sure it will, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's on the list. Yeah. We all want to do this. Yeah. yeah. I want to do a music video, too. I, I regret this. I, uh, now, the you last mean like a musical, or are you talking about like an actual music Music video. video. Okay, yeah. Because uh, uh, I can't get down with a musical. Nah, there I, are some. I, I like some good, there's some good music. There's some good ones. Yeah. My Fair Lady, that's a good one. Uh, that's have all you seen, Have you seen of. Hamilton? I do <laughs> like, I I do like Hamilton. Hamilton. I have seen it. I did the the, the Hamilton on on Disney. I I swear I I was not a I'm not a musical guy. I have not seen the new Hamilton though. I, I would I would strongly suggest right. uh, on a day we have a fun cookie with you. Hey, fair. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> so That'll like, help. That'll I'll help. Give it a go. It's it's pretty solid. Yeah. Well, that makes anything better though. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's true. Because <laughs> yeah. I went into Hamilton, I was like, I'm not gonna like this, and then I was like, I think they're probably gonna like it. Probably make a funeral better. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, you guys have my permission. If or you're worse, ever at my funeral, have it, have at it with the cookies. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Hope that's a long time. Yeah, me too. Me uh, too. But if it's not, have a good time. Have you <laughs> seen? Uh, have you been to any Broadway? Yeah. Well, have you been to Wicked? Yes. Oh, did you? You don't like that? It's okay. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you won't like him. I haven't. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't well, seen Wicked. Well, you, you like uh, you're into opera and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I, I like Bocelli. I mean, I, I don't. I like music. The, I like music. I don't like the four story via song. Gotcha. I don't know, like something about like like hairspray or you know like, I like these, hairspray. You know what I'm saying? Like like the the they it's a movie but they break out singing all the time. You like like it just, dramatized. It dramatized. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It yeah. just throws me off. I'm like, listen. I, I guess there's something I can appreciate about the music, but I don't like sometimes like combining them together throws me way off. Yeah. I like just act it out. 
Like, why are we breaking into song? <laughs> <laughs> so you like plays, but not musicals. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I, I like them better. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. You know, but because hey, I guess when I'm watching a play, what I feel like is, is that there is no background music. Like when you make a movie, there's background music to create a feeling, right? Yeah, yeah. It helps it helps accentuate a feeling or a direction that you're trying to take the film, right? Like a somber mode, you have like danger. the somber, yeah, danger. Yeah. You have like these these beats that are going to help create an emotional response. So when I'm watching a play, I don't feel like you have that as much. So I feel like the music kind of goes with it to help create that vibe. But when I'm watching a movie, I just expect to hear like background noise, right? Mm-hmm. I just expect to hear it. So when everything stops in the whole movie. And everybody that's involved, everybody, every character, all of a sudden has a choreographed dance and song. It throws me off. I'm like, wait a second. Yeah. Now, now I've went from believing that this was a movie. See, like for me, what I love about a movie is the fact that I can get totally engulfed in it. When I feel like a great movie is like I forget that it's a movie. Mm-hmm. I forget that yep. those people are actors, right? That is them in that moment. The stakes are real. Right. And when they all break out into choreographed music <laughs> and song and dance... I remember immediately that it's not real. Yeah. You don't do that Boy, in real do life? we have something for you here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> we should insert right here. We should all do a little, uh, a little jingle. <laughs> a, little, a little something. A little what, what, kind of, what, what song do you want? A little White House Road? Um, <laughs> well, you know, oh, uh, he's, he's, he grew up close to where uh, I'm from, Tyler Childers. Yeah, yeah, I love some Childers, man. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. an interesting dude. Yeah. yeah, Maisie saw him like, Perform before he was even huge. Like she was a kid, and he would go to open mics around Huntington. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. awesome. He, uh, yeah. one of our best friends. Um, uh, his his uh, younger brother's um, um, that was one of his favorite favorite artists. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, um, yeah, but no, I'm a big fan of of him. I'm with you on that though. I think <coughs> I have seen some plays where they have good uh, good musical scores and stuff, and they're you can still get uh, captivated by the acting and the, mm-hmm. the story but uh it is true with digital technology a film really draws you in and yeah. and, and connects you but then i can't wait till uh mainstream movies are uh when there's like a 3d or uh, not 3d but like a, a vr uh component to it oh, so okay. you can watch it in vr is i've yeah i've seen a couple of short films in vr like 360 vr so you're in the room oh that's cool could, would it be when great if you could pick a character yeah, and like kind of go through their Me story. Too, yeah. Maybe a pick your own adventure thing. Yeah, something Some like version. that. Yeah. Is but this it's happening? In, in, <laughs> in some of the 360 VR short films, though, you're in the scene. Like I was, I did a couple of horror ones, and yeah, you know, you're in the room with when everything's happening, and you can look around the room, and it's 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 really uh, an interesting experience yeah those would have a lot of rewatchability because you could kind of look around and say oh i missed that guy right. in the corner last yeah. time like pulling out yeah. a gun or running yeah. away or whatever Did a lot of easter eggs or yeah. the, the, the villain is behind you, you know? yeah. yeah oh yeah, yeah that's good that's good too yeah. he's right behind me isn't he so. yeah because you see yeah. the the actor in front the back of, you. of your gear needs to have a little uh, way to blow air on the back of your neck. oh make it like a 4d that'll thing. be a thing yeah, yeah soon that they're working on that. Yeah. We're like a haptic suit or whatever, yeah. so you Full can play as like suits. a goon or a, a bodyguard guy for two <laughs> seconds. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's it'll be that'll be available soon. Yeah. You so could get whacked in VI. <laughs> yeah. Get whacked in a lot of things, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> where's, <laughs> the, where's the where's the? <laughs> we can add that. I can add that. Yeah. That's <laughs> so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you're not like musicals. You're not gonna like Batman. So many, so many musicals. Oh, there are musicals. No. I was gonna say. I was like, I'm, I'm definitely not gonna. Like like it. You just go into a movie thinking it's normal, and then just ah shit. Like it's a just, musical. They that, throw me off, man. I instantly like, and it's not that it's not quality. Like I get, I recognize the talent. Yeah. It just pull. It takes me out of that place where I'm mm-hmm. in it, right? Like I'm in it because that's not a reality for me. Like I've never. <laughs> been anywhere you don't where have a song in your heart yeah i don't have a song <laughs> in my heart right and i've been with some friends and we all like start a thing and and for like three seconds we sing the same song but i've never had everybody in my entire vicinity and and i view yeah so that <laughs> started takes this, in a choreographed dance so like it just takes me to a place where i realize all right wait a second i'm watching something and yeah. i don't like that because i like to be fully engulfed in it like i like the fact that my brain Stops thinking about the world, mm-hmm. and I'm in the moment. Yeah, and that takes me out of the moment, which is what ruins it for me. Yeah. Plus the magic of the film. Yeah. yeah. Wait yeah. a second. Why is Al Pacino singing? Yeah. What's going on? And <laughs> I love Pacino, but they've done some. <laughs> 
There's a few things with him. I'm like, come on, don't don't do that. Don't ru- don't ruin my memory of him. You're not a big fan of the Dunkachino. The Dunkachino. Dunkachino. I, I see the humor in that one when he did it. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, what movie was I, that? I like again? the helicopter. He goes and gets the girl um, with Adam Sandler. It was Jack and Jill, right? Jack and Jill. Maisie yeah. loves that movie. I yeah. hate it. <laughs> I'm a huge Adam Sandler fan, and yeah, you know the funny. Dunkachino thing is funny. Seeing that, I didn't consider that a musical, right? That part. There is a part there, but see, I'm still fine because that's his character he's yeah. playing. And so I was still good with that, but yeah. And it's a commercial. It's like yeah, for a commercial exactly. thing. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 so yeah, I'm yeah, good yeah. with that. I think for me, it took me a while to get into musicals because I, I was like that before too. I was like, I, yeah. I don't like this. I yeah. think it was because my first taste of musical, I guess, was like, you know, when you're a kid and you have to go to like uh, school plays. And, yeah. and Mine was uh, Grease. Oh, I really? Consider the oh. first... Like that, I remember I call that a musical. I don't like, I'm not a big Grease guy. Yeah, that was the very first, I was, I was like, I don't know, six or seven watching my grandparents, I think. And I remember it. I'm like, I loved some of it. I remember some of it, right? Like the mm-hmm. good girl that falls in love with the bad guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The you flying know, the, car. I'll tell you, yeah. a musical I do love yeah. from back then in the 80s. Uh, when we were kids was um, Little Shop of Horrors. I like that yeah, one a such lot. Such a good, one, yeah. good movie, man. That one's cool. Yeah, we got to see that one, and they had like big puppets come up. Like Seymour was a puppet, and oh. everyone went in it. It was awesome. That was cool. But not Seymour. What was uh, Seymour was the guy. Uh, uh, Seymour. Uh, yeah, Seymour two was the guy. And uh, was, was he was Seymour two? Was the plant's name? No, it was. What was the plant's name? Uh, feed me, feed yeah, me, feed me, Seymour. So hungry. <laughs> I don't remember the name of the plant. <laughs> I can't remember name. Audrey. Audrey, that's it. Yeah. Audrey. Oh, he named it after the girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's right. Audrey too. Yeah, that's Audrey it. That's too. it. Yeah. Yep. Audrey too. We're gonna have to. We're, now you're, <laughs> you're gonna have come on the film. And the, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the podcast, you're gonna have <laughs> Seymour and yeah, Audrey. Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Can you have him eat her? No. I could maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if copy. I don't know where we're running the copyright with that. So that's true. Yeah, that's but true. I wonder if that's uh, it may be public domain by now. Maybe Winnie the Pooh is so public domain. Really? Yeah. Really? Well, the 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 kids book version. You can't do oh, okay. Disney. Yeah, you yeah. can't do Disney red shirt no pants, but you can do. Uh, yeah. Storybook one. Well, you have you noticed how they keep retooling the characters? I think it's so that they can keep redoing the. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Disney's done that. Sure. Yep. Since the beginning, they have yep. to do that with Marvel stuff too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we just need to go back and find all the things that are no longer. We'll just start. <laughs> yeah, Dracula's. Uh, I think Dracula is. Um, Nosferatu. I don't know if he is, but I know really? Dracula is. I don't know he if has Nosferatu. To be. On, on a side note, so we're talking about this. I went and watched Morbius, and I've been waiting. So I'm not a comic book guy. Yeah, I'm just not, and that's funny because one of my partners owns a comic book store. Store. <laughs> <laughs> the comic dimension, shameless plug. Well, I'm not a big Carolina. comic book guy either. I used to read them when I was a kid. Oh, and okay. I liked them, and I read yeah. some graphic novels occasionally, but yeah. I, mean, I don't have time. My dad's got an exhaustive collection. I like right? the world. Really? Yeah, but I've never gotten into comic books. My dad was <laughs> big into comics. Yeah, yeah. So so I'm, I had no clue that Morbius was related to any comic. I just thought it was like vampire movie. vampire movie, right? And like two years ago, before the whole pandemic, they were already advertised for it to come out, and it got pushed. It got shelved just like a bunch of other things, mm-hmm. like the new um, – um, Top Gun. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's been shelved for a long time, and I'm very impatient. And uh, so I've been having to wait. So, anyway, Morbius comes out. I actually talked to Neil about going to watch it. They had an early release on a Thursday night, and um, they had no showings here. So I ended up driving um, home what I would call early. I got uh, to Mooresville at, like, 9.50, and the show started at 9.45, but I knew there was commercials. Yeah. And uh, so, anyway, and I watched it, and I loved it. And I didn't realize until really? the end credits. There's multiple sets of end credits. I'll, I'll leave it out, but... You don't know that it's a comic book. You have no clue if you're not a comic guy until the very end. Mm. And one of the credits, and you're like, wait a second. This has something to do with why is Spider-Man in this thing? Like, yeah. what, what? That that was a huge curveball for me. So have I had you, no have clue. You seen it yet? It no, awesome. I haven't seen it. I have not heard I've, good I've things it. about it. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen it twice. Really? I love it. I, I, love okay. it. <laughs> I think the reason it gets some bad reviews is because it's um, – it's mostly just character building. Uh, okay. I liked it though. I enjoyed it. Okay. Um, but it, it is, it's like uh, not a big Leto guy. When you finish the film, you're like, okay, let's watch the movie. Uh, yeah, I, I think it sets. I mean, yeah. like I, I've, and now maybe the people that are comic fans don't like it because it may it may stray from the story. Yeah, much. maybe uh, that's it. I don't know. I loved it. I yeah. thought it was a different spin on. Dracula, like mm, on, on okay. 
I, I, I do did. like Dracula. It's, it's weird. People are so hard on actors because Leto's a good actor, like a great actor. He is good. Yeah. It's just some of the some of the parts and the way he does things that just sometimes not my thing. Yeah. I feel like this was a great role for him. Really, like, it was perfect. He did. He did a good job. Yeah. Yeah. What, now, and I gotta Joker, ask yeah. anybody that knows this, like Lucian is a famous character in, in many vampire, werewolf, whatever. Yeah, just a cool name. Cool I'm name, right? But is there any relation? Is that Lucian by design? Because, you know, like look at uh, Lucian in uh, Underworld. I don't even like hearing that name in, in uh, Supernatural movies anymore because it's been, it's been used over done. Oh. So yeah. I was just wondering if, if Lucian was some tied to something else because it's in Underworld. It's in a lot of stuff. Well, there's probably a, a, in, that, in that. Is it just made to be the villain? Well, I'd say in like uh, in, in superhero movies or comic book based movies, there's there's so many Easter eggs uh, and so many callbacks yeah. to different. So if, unless you unless you're really familiar with that series, you just wouldn't know. there's no way to know. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. But anyway, yes, yeah, so I'm I'm not a big fan of uh, musicals, but <laughs> <laughs> went on a tangent. So a lot of times in those movies, they you can't you can't cover the whole story. It's yeah. Too too in depth. So they'll add in these little Easter eggs just to sort of uh, a little bite size little yeah, things just, into just, the lore. Yeah, just to to appease the people that are mm-hmm. really into that. Series. Yeah, kind of fan service, I guess, to yeah. an extent. Like Ready Player One, they did it a lot. Yeah, you told me about that. I still haven't seen that one. Yeah, so in that in that movie, um, in the book, there's so much in the book mm-hmm. that's uh, nostalgic for. Is E. T. in it? There's probably a reference. Okay, I love ET. And <laughs> ET is my favorite movie. By the way. <laughs> I love ET. Yeah. It's a good one. It's, it's for for me. That's a very nostalgic. Yeah, film. I bet. It's one of the first movies I remember seeing. Really? Yeah, I saw it at the drive-in theater with my parents when I was three. Wow, and, you remember that? Yeah, and then when I was when I was a kid, I'd watch it all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, I had it on VH. I wore the tape out. Yeah, I don't know. I think my first movie I remember watching was maybe Toy Story. Oh, maybe. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Because that came out in 96. I was born in 96, but it was on VHS, I remember. I watched it so much that that one broke, too. The VHS oh, broke, yeah. yeah. It's interesting. That was stuff the end of remember. VHS right there. Yeah, it was, yeah, was kind of on the way out, I yeah. think. Uh, but, um, but yeah, so like Ready Player One in the book, it's, it's got all these really cool nostalgic references, but it would be very difficult to translate that to film, yeah. or you'd have to do it over multiple movies. Mm-hmm. So in the movie, they just uh, you just see all these references in the background a lot. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like for me, I like some of the Marvel movies, but sometimes I feel like it's too big. Like when I watch a movie, like uh, um, what's the latest one? Like uh, like Spider Man. Yeah, like I loved it. It was fun, but then sometimes it feels like it's too big for me. And I really like I really like whenever it's like yeah. I f- it kind of claustrophobic to a point because like you're really really in that world like I was thinking about that movie Signs where they're, it's all in that house and that's why I love that's it so cool, much yeah. and it's terrifying it makes it scarier because it's like just right there that's why I really like um, did you like Devil? I haven't seen that one yeah, I liked the uh, Lighthouse like that like yeah. Robert Eggers I think is his name I haven't seen that I it's a good one though, he's yeah. really good at making you like oh my god <sighs> Claustrophobic. Yeah. I got to add this, by the way, because you're talking about. So, one of the things I think about is like the multiple dimensions and mm-hmm. stuff like this with Spider Man. Yeah. Where they, where they were starting to like really get it. Re, you're really kind of mind blown with some of it, right? So, mm-hmm. <laughs> at the end of Morbius now. Oh. But, uh, oh, okay. but so you get this callback. You've got some of these callbacks to some of the comic stuff. So, I got to go to Will Smith and the slap. <laughs> <laughs> this multiple dimension opens up, and Will Smith walks through the portal. And walks up and smacks. Um, he snaps his fingers like this and kills everybody. Oh, Thanos. Thanos. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he walks up and smacks Thanos in the face. And Thanos has got that little cut and he wipes the blood. Yeah. Right? So the, th- the scene. All that for a drop of blood. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and it's and it's Will Smith smack. And I, I saw, I've seen all kinds of memes after yeah. this, this whole event, right? And yeah. that one got me. I was just like, touche. Yeah. That's pretty good. There's some pretty good ones up yeah, there. Yeah, there yeah. are some good ones. Yeah. Yep. I like the Madagascar one where it was him as the zebra. Oh, yeah, that yeah, one's yeah. pretty good. <laughs> I didn't see that one. Yeah. See, so that stuff makes me excited. Like I like the one where he got smacked like out, like smacked out of the room. Like yeah, like he was a dummy. Out of yeah. New York. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. They'll be in a Super Bowl commercial, I'm I, telling you. I think Chris is waiting to see Together. how it's handled. They're supposed to, actually, they're supposed to meet this morning. Are they? Yeah, they met this morning. They expedited it. Uh, they were supposed to meet at 9 o'clock, uh, so it would have been 12 o'clock our time. They're meeting in Versailles. They're, uh, you make it sound like not, a not war, a, a not war a, thing. <laughs> not a Chris and uh, uh, Will, the um, the governing body for the... Oh, oh the, academy. the Academy. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, they expedited it to uh, to do it. It's supposed to be this, it was supposed to be this morning. Oh, they're going to re- like take back his award or something? Well, they're trying to figure out what to do. Oh, mm. interesting. Yep. Mm. 
I'd yeah. like to see Chris Rock's take on it. I want to see how he feels about it. He filmed a, he did a, a couple shows in Boston uh, right after. Sold a lot of tickets, and then people were disappointed that he didn't talk about it. Yeah. And uh, like it just happened. Basically, he said, "Well, I've been working on this hour for quite a while, and I don't feel like I should have to change my material uh, because people want to hear about what someone else did." So yeah, uh, mm. that's fair. Yeah, I think he'll talk about it eventually. Well, he may be filing a lawsuit, too. I think he's waiting to see what happens. Mm. I mean, I think he's already showed that he could be calm and show restraint. Oh, yeah. So, I think he's waiting to see what happens. Well, I think he's probably filing a lawsuit, too. That's what I'm saying. But, but. Yeah. Cause he's, so, he probably get, won't talk about it. got to let things uh, play out. Yeah. So. I would be shocked if he files a lawsuit. Really? I don't yeah. think he will either. He will. I think they will, and they'll do it in a sealed fashion so nobody knows about it, and they will do it where it won't be public knowledge. So are are the they friends? Do you know if they know each other? I have no idea. I, I, I'll i be perfectly honest. I don't give a fuck about either one of these I guys. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> it's Yeah. Uh, as someone who's uh, been slapped, slapped, and uh, slapped and been slapped from stage, none of this is... It, it just none of it matters. Uh, you know what I mean? Like none of it matters. Will Smith's got a life. It's it's just like, yep. Who gives a fuck? I don't. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Anyway, yeah. It's Who not, knows? Time important. will tell. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. They'll be in a Super Bowl commercial. I'm telling you, it'll be. I don't know That'll what it would cool. be for. Maybe Doritos or something. Like, <laughs> yeah. did you eat all my Doritos? And then maybe they'll be he slaps him, <laughs> and then there will be Doritos <laughs> on his face. See, I think that'd be the way to solve it, right that would, there. That would yeah. be good. Yeah. yeah, if they could get a little collaborative effort to go. Yeah. 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 Good. Good. Uh, and then Jada walks in with more Doritos. Like, I got more. <laughs> and August is like holding a tray. She yeah. walks in with some Lay's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't just have one. Uh, It'll all work out. August uh, has got like the cheese dip and. <laughs> Who knows? And a little Tupac throwback, maybe. Oh, like yeah. A Tupac hologram, like, bumps up on the stage. Carlton from Fresh Prince will be there. there we go. It's not unusual. Yeah, a little, uh, what's that dance he does? The Carlton? The Carlton, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's called the Carlton something. I don't know. Is shake. this happening? Are we making a <laughs> Super Bowl commercial? We should make one. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. Uh. Investors, possibly you. <laughs> <laughs> Just a right. commercial about nothing. Yeah, yeah, I'd like that. I think that's the best goddamn commercial. Do I'm, they, I'm do ready they give for awards for commercials. We could win one. They do. Yeah. 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 Uh, what uh, What are they called? I it, don't know. It's not it's Clio's. In, yeah, it's in Mad Men. They want a Clio. Or something. There's another one too, yeah. though. I think that, uh, the only reason I know that Cleo. is because Jerry Seinfeld gave a fantastic uh, acceptance of spe- acceptance award for a Clio one time. What was the ad? Uh, That's a good question. We should make ma- ours. I think it's the Mastercard ad that he did during. Oh the yeah, uh, we should do ours and call it the Neo Neil, the Neil, the Neil, the Neil Award, the Neilio. We're gonna come up with our own commercial, our own thing. We're gonna give ourselves awards. I think I like that. I like it. Have Seth edit this Doritos commercial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get it going. Get it going. Mm-hmm. On a side note, where did you learn? So some of the stuff you've done, like, um. I was surprised, like some of the editing, like some of the stuff that you've been able to do. Oh yeah, I don't know why. I just was like, oh wow, he can do quite a bit. He's. Where did you learn most of that? Is that from college? Is that just you self-taught? Or? Uh, I mean, mainly in college, it was mostly journalism. I gotcha. took a few classes on how to do Premiere and got like the basics down and everything and uh, stuff like that. But I mean, a lot of it is YouTube University. Just yeah. like I'll run into like he'll be like, hey, can we do this? I was like. I'll find out. Well, <laughs> like, I'm pretty that. sure we will. And just like Google, YouTube or whatever, and then just kind of work through that and then log that. And I'm like, okay, I know how to do that now. I know That's how to awesome. do that now. Yeah, so. it's one of my favorite things is uh, if I'm like, hey, can we some fucking ridiculous thing I say? And it's never a no. I love that. It's yeah. not a no. It's, it's a hmm. And then, uh, then he disappears for... 20 minutes and he comes back and he tells me uh, maybe not that but something close <laughs> something and I'm like close. fuck yeah man you know I love right. that in well, business and, and, and literally that's the difference for us for somebody's gonna be successful or not is the one that doesn't immediately go to a no yeah. and tries to figure out a way to make it work yeah problem, like solving. The, the problem solving is key because you've got so many people that immediately want to tell you the 10 reasons why they can't do it yeah and not only that try to convince you that it's a bad idea 
And those people typically really, really, really struggle in life. Yeah. They really do. That's true. A lot of it is like I take it personally when I don't know how to do something. Like if it's difficult, I'm like, oh, these eggheads think they can make it hard. It shouldn't be this hard. And it again, goes back to the getting mad at computer. I'm just like, I'll show you like that. (laughs) And then I got to step away for a little bit because, I mean, I was doing it the other day with Eric. I don't remember what I was trying to do. And I was just like, I feel so dumb. There's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way. way. And he was like, just step away for a second. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I talk about. Positive suffering. That's what that is. Yeah. (laughs) It's if, you know, if you're trying to get better at something, it hurts. It's Mm -hmm. painful. It's like working out. Yeah. 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 But uh, also one of the things I told him too is you shouldn't know how to do all of this stuff yet. I agree. He, right. He, he, he got here uh, a month or two ago, and he's learned everything that we've thrown at him, but he didn't set any of this stuff up. It wasn't a thing that was on his radar a couple of months ago. So I was like, it's, it's fucking awesome that you know the things you know right now, and you, if you knew everything, it would be weird. Right. And, and he's learning at a really uh, fast rate, which is impressive. Yeah. Well, also, uh, you know, like school is kind of, uh, I always look at school as like the it's the launching pad. Like you're yeah. learning the basics. You learn how to learn. You're learning the principles of what you want to do. And mm-hmm. then you, you start applying those principles professionally yeah. in your life. And then uh, in, a lot of, in, in whatever field you're in, those, a lot of these different things are intuitive too. Like I, I'm sure like with, with editing, it's kind of like in design, like with graphic design and stuff, all these different softwares, they're just mediums, they're tools, and, and there's some uh, intuitive aspect of it. It's like, I, I kind of know what this thing's going to do, or if I need to do a certain thing, I, I kind of know the tools or how they'll work relative to idea. make it happen. And, and I know it can happen. It's just figuring out how to wield the tool properly, mm-hmm. and I'm sure it's the same with that. Yeah, I mean, like, when I, uh, when I worked in news, I learned more about journalism actually working in news as a producer than I did at school. And it's not like a knock to any of my professors or anything. I had great teachers and yeah. everything. It was awesome. But, I mean, it's just you learn while you're doing it and you're actually in it and right. everything like that. So, yeah. And people who have been doing it. Like, I learned a lot from the anchors I worked with and everything. And it's like people have been in it forever. And so it's usually you learn more actually in it than yeah. um, at school. Because, I mean, yeah. you're just, like you said, getting the basics and getting how to learn. You're learning how to learn right. yeah. and then w- applying. So Learning principles. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Hell, yeah. It's like that in business, too. Yeah. Business is, um, yeah. you know, like when I was a kid, I would think of business conceptually, like, mm-hmm. uh, s- you know, selling products or something. And then uh, as, as you get older and you, and you start getting into business, you start a business and, and you start to – understand the different components you know what it takes to start a business how to set up a company and then uh you know how to deal with the accountant how to you know keep up with all your finances how to do your books yeah you know how to how to um you know what are your products or services what are your profit margins those types of things and it just you know eventually all businesses start to look the same yeah they're just uh they they all have similar fundamentals Mm -hmm. on how they operate and it's just finding out um, you know, making sure you have the right people in the right places to to run the machine, and and then figuring out if you can duplicate this business or you know, ha- I think for Daniel and I both, we we've always looked at business as um, uh, we want to build the business up and get it and make it efficient and self self sufficient so we can duplicate it. Yep. somewhere else or sell it and then uh start another one and, and uh and i feel like we could probably start a company doing anything yeah i think so because once you un- understand the fundamentals it's it's, it's basically it's either either a product or a service or a mixture of both but i mean literally it's just a widget it's just yeah. whatever yeah. you're selling x or providing x and then you just know the bi- the business metrics it's yeah we can we can insert here i think um let's say we were in the movie business Right, the missing element could be, right, the thing that hits. How do you how do you ha- how do you produce the thing that gets mass appeal? Right. Mm-hmm. So there's some level of talent, right, that comes involved. But then you go, well, is it, or is it, the people at the top have a have a formula that's proven, and the actors have a way of sifting and. Sh- uh, there's still talent though. It's there's just talent in different areas. Well, yeah, but you, the actors are the talent, right? Yeah. And then the directors of talent. 
the people making it work, they're all talented people, but um, they have a way of sifting themselves to the top, right? The cream rises to the top. So the best in each of those fields that makes the film work, work their way to the top. The guy that, that is, what do you call him, the executive producer, the guy that's putting the money behind Usually everything. Usually multiple, yeah. Multiples, right? They, they are talented running the business, and they're in the business of film, and they hire the best people. They promote and recruit the best people, mm-hmm. yeah. right? The, that's part of their process. So you go, okay, well, you just need to know that formula. Yeah, right? movies are interesting because it's, each film is a business, an independent I so never all thought of it that way. Films are ma- massive businesses that yeah. that uh, only operate for a few months. Yeah, yeah. And Pop then, ups, and they could pay you yeah. for you know I don't know about forever, but maybe forever in theory. Well, they do for pay a, people forever. Some, some a of, lot yeah. of people get paid forever. Yeah. yeah. So if you think for about it, like 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 so to me, I go well, you know, what's the barrier? The barrier is you'd have to get in and fail a few times, for right, sure. to figure it out. So like if you played a video game the very first time, you'd never ever played a video game before, and you won. No, you would probably fun. never play another video game ever. Yeah. Right? Like, I, I wouldn't. Like, what, where's the challenge, right? So, like, that's the way we look at business. Like, you got to – some things you got to kind of fail your way through it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to start with something too big. No, oh, yeah. So, starting a business is like Elden Ring, it sounds like. What is that? It's Elden a, Ring. It's a really hard video game. Well, oh. I mean, it depends. It's yeah, one of those games where game. you will die a lot. Oh, so. I think that's important. <laughs> yeah. You learn lessons that way, right? Yeah. yeah. We, we had a business um, that we were working on that – we could have very easily in, in a in a year put out about $10 million. And we were like, you know what? I get some good advice from, we'll call it a mentor in that industry. And he said some version of something I've heard many, many times from many people that I consider to be um, in a mentor role in that moment. And he's like, better to learn the million dollar lesson than the $10 million one, right? Like, uh, like yeah. take and do this smaller thing at a smaller scale and learn about the business first. Yeah. So if you are going to have temporary failures, right? Not you do. Temporary failure in a business to me looks like, how long does it take when you launch a business before you actually, the business actually pays for itself? So every single month that you're at a loss, that's a temporary failure, right? Yeah. It doesn't mean that you've lost the entire business because you take those losses and you make micro adjustments. And if you keep twisting, you keep changing certain fundamentals where you f- see where the holes in your ship are, you're able to make enough micro adjustments to where you eventually have a business that self-sustains. And then from there, then you try to get a business that not only self-sustains but produces a profit to the owners, right? Yeah. And so you go through these phases. We have a completely new business in an industry we've never been in. And I got to tell you, you know, there's statistics out there. It takes you three years. It takes you five years to get profitable. We're eight months in. And we went during that transition from month seven to month eight. We not only went to where it was completely profitable or break even rather, but to where it's going to put off probably somewhere in the neighborhood of of 350 to $400,000 a year in positive net cash flow that will be distributed amongst the owners. And that's where it's projected today. Yeah. Right. But it took, if you want to look at it from the other, from a different viewpoint, it took seven or eight months of temporary failures, not counting the year prior to that to get, to get everything lined up to do the business. And it took seven or eight months of just not quite getting it right and making those micro adjustments to get to a point where you could not only break even, but then make a profit. Yeah. It's like the tuition fee, the money you lose. A lot of staff. Well, it's, and it's us learning this industry because it's, it's, it was a unique thing. Right. So, I think for me, any business that's and, and like any video game, like if you play it long enough, you should be able to beat it. Yeah. Right. And like that's that's business. Like if you if you take the feedback that a temporary failure is as just that it's feedback and you put that in and you change the way that you go about solving that problem, eventually you get you get something that works. And mm-hmm. sometimes beating the video game is not you playing the game. Sometimes you have to maybe you don't have any hands. So you hire someone that. Yeah. Is is proficient at video games and they have good hands and they yeah. can beat the game. Good hands. <laughs> so yeah. you know it's uh, you got to be creative about the solution because yeah. the way you're trying to solve it may be the reason you're failing. Right. Uh, That's what he's okay. saying, right? Like you know, I may be trying to solve a problem that I shouldn't. I'm not. A not quick, yeah, you're mm-hmm. not an expert in that problem. Yeah, I shouldn't be trying to solve yeah. the problem. You the, keep the, rolling when you're supposed to be parrying. So. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But then once you have a, a, a process that you know is proven and that it works and you're not just blowing smoke up your own per- proverbial tail, yeah. now you have something that's duplicatable and now you can provide scale. So, um, And that is where what real wealth is, is created or real success because doing something one time right is not going to change a lot of people's lives. But if mm-hmm. you can take that one and duplicate it, it and recreate it, now you know, you've got success on a large scale. And that's how you change a lot of people's lives. Yeah. Not just one person getting wealthy. A lot of people can get wealthy off that. And also, even if you know how to do the stuff, if you're the entrepreneur who started the company or you're the 
CEO, it, it may not be in your best interest to be doing the work because you need to look at the whole thing. Yep. Like you mm-hmm. need to conceptualize the entire business, not just one aspect of it. Or uh, you don't need to be spending time doing something that you should be paying someone else to do when you're not paying attention to the rest of the machine. Yeah. Yep. You know. So like like Steve Jobs wasn't building iPhones. He he was the a lot of the vision behind their products, mm-hmm. but you know, he wasn't working in a lab or in a facility manufacturing products. You know, he was he was running he was putting the right people in the right places to do the to create his vision. Yeah. You know. And that's that's typical for most entrepreneurs. Yeah, I could learn a lot about business if it, we related to video games. It makes sense to me. <laughs> It's, it's very much like a video game. Yeah. Very much like a video well, game. Life so you guys are like gamers. Game. Gamers at life. Yeah. 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 I want to win. All those, uh, the death in a game, right, that you respawn from, that's death in business maybe. Yeah. And what is death? I think everybody looks at a failure as it has to be, it has to be abs- absolute. Mm-hmm. And that's not the case. Right? I, like wish, it, I wish the uh, reset in life was a little better. I, th- <laughs> I think it's, I, yeah, I, I agree with that. It's, it's definitely... Some of the rules don't make sense. Right. Some of the, some of the things like they they're just they're they're counterproductive and they don't make well, a whole lot of sense and they're arduous yeah. and and I think some of these things are going to change and technology makes things move faster. But you know, I, I'll give you an example. You know, um, I, it's no uh, secret that I did very very well and then I didn't do very well and lost everything and then went to a negative number and had to start over. Um, it was easier for me to go buy a very expensive cars than it was to buy a home to live mm. in. Like I could buy a car, let's say a Cadillac, for the, which was at that time more expensive than a home that I was looking at, just a, just a temporary place. And, you know, that collateral to me is safer. But because of the rules that are in place, I couldn't qualify for the house, which didn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, but I could qualify for a, for a car that had so much more liability tied to it, right? So, like, some of this, this system is... It just doesn't make sense to me, right? It's, it's difficult to win in this system, and, but you can't do it. And I, I feel like, like I want to win, but also I don't want people to lose. Yeah. I, I feel like you have a system where uh, we talked about, you know, the higher floor in the society. So there's a good launching pad for people to. I'm fine with people losing. I just don't want them to lose everything. Yeah, everything. yeah. Like where the where you you know the, I, the I landing to, is not. I want hard. to lose. You have to to get I, better. I, I, yeah. I want to lose. I want to yeah. know because me losing is really what that's saying is that's death in a video game. Yeah. I can As long as I can respawn and go at it again, I'll lose with the best of them. Exactly, yeah. It loses well, I, I feel like if fast and often as I can. Yeah, losses the, teach you more than if, your wins. That's if right. If the floor was higher in society, I feel like uh, we would all be better because yeah. we wouldn't be as afraid to lose. There's a there's a martial arts guy, and I'm not going to get into the thing, but there's this martial arts guy, and he's he's lives in a very secluded area in another country, and – he there's all these things and there's YouTube videos of him like touching people and them falling and <laughs> you know twisting his hands and then whole rooms of people just beating them all up right yeah but he's geez. in this echo chamber of he cannot lose right and what happens is in real life when you meet somebody that spent their life losing but getting better when those two people met what happens is is the guy that cannot lose loses in an epic way mm-hmm. right yeah and gets utterly embarrassed. And so if we artificially let people win without the effort that it takes and the sacrifice it takes to get there, we're just setting them up for a long-term failure at some point. Yeah. True. Yeah. Because when that person that's been able to win without, without everything I've went through faces me, I'm going to crush them. Yeah. And I will not lose a wink of sleep by doing it. But in that moment, I, when I say crush them, I mean I want to win in that moment. That's fine. I fully expect them to get up, dust themselves off, and figure out how to compete Right, how to get back at, mm-hmm. at it? I don't want to. I don't want that's anybody want, to quit. Yeah. I, I want welcome the competition, right? Like I think that's it's important, right? And I want to see them get back, and I want to get you know, back on the horse. Yeah, I've had people that have that literally when I was younger, especially, and I'm sure it'll happen in the future where I've been uh, in we'll call it competition with somebody, and they beat me. And man, does that make you go back to the drawing board? Yeah, right. Yep. And it's humbling, and it's it teaches humility. It teaches a lot of things. I think that's important. Well, that's what I think suffering is good if it's positive suffering so yeah. like if, yeah, if you had a society where the floor was high you had all your basic needs i, I don't like the term uh income equality i think it's a problem because if you're a doctor you should clearly make more money than a janitor i just don't think the janitor should be in poverty and also mm-hmm. a janitor is a meaningless purpose a meaningless job there's no purpose 
uh, to that individual. There's a, it's a very important job for, for the facility they work in and they clean, but it, for that individual, th- it gives you no meaning, no mm-hmm. purpose. Mm-hmm. So I, don't like, I would like to see a society where people doing those types of jobs only do those jobs maybe 20 hours a week, and then they have time pursue and resources to pursue something that yeah. they're better, to figure out what yeah. they're good at mm-hmm. and to try. And, then, and, and, and there will be failing during that, that pursuit of, of becoming better uh, and that's, you know, when you're learning something new, it hurts. It's painful. That's, that's positive suffering. When you fail at something, it hurts. That's positive suffering. You're learning something. They just, you just have to keep trying. Yeah. But if, if your whole life is just survival, then you, you can't try. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I feel like I'd, I'd like to see us as, as a society uh, create a, um, a, a level a, playing field. Well, not, not just that, but just a... Uh, a, a society where we encourage people to try. Okay. And yeah. and because it's like, oh, if I try, then I won't eat next week. Right. For a lot of people, that's <laughs> yeah. a lot of people's which reality. is a problem. Yeah, yeah. And I agree with that completely. Yeah. 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 No, yeah, I think you should be able to try and not lose everything. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. And I'm perfectly fine with that. I think. I don't. I don't think. I. I do think that. Listen, man. If you're more skillful or something, like, and again, some things like art are the beauties in the eye of the beholder, right? Like. I may really appreciate your art, but that doesn't mean everybody else does, right? Oh, yeah. But at the same point, like, if I really, really value what you offer and I'm willing to exchange something I've worked hard for for it, you should do well because of that. And right. if I don't like the the guy that's selling art next to you and I chose not to give him some of my money, I, he is being penalized in the moment. I, I, I think he should still be able to survive, right? Yeah. If right. more people like your art than his, I still think he should be able to eat. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I don't mean eat like... You know, school cafeteria lunch that, that you know, I've, I, I mean, like, actually eat. Like but also, if, if that yeah. person's drawing stick figures, then, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but if some people like stick figures. That's true. But I was yeah. about to say, someone will maybe like the way figures, that guy does it better than me. <laughs> maybe, politically, it would have been better if he would have just had a father that was a president. His stick figures would have sold for half a <laughs> <laughs> You know? I mean, you know, it's all about who you know. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Sadly, yeah, it's who you know. Sometimes mm-hmm. Actually, and, and I say that in a joke because it's an easy joke, but I have no idea... Maybe he's an awesome artist. I Actually, he is an awesome. He's I an have, artist. I have no clue. So. I don't. I don't know that his paintings are worth anything. There's yeah. a lot of corruption in art. Yeah, I agree. Who yeah. are we talking about? Who? 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 Who's? Oh, well. he's talking about uh, Joe Biden's son. Yeah. Oh, Hunter, oh, Hunter I, Biden, I thought you were talking about George Bush because he paints yeah, now. Yeah, his, his artwork. <laughs> I had no idea what you're talking about. No, his, his I mean, is things good. are valued at whatever someone's willing to pay for it. Yeah, right? that's true. Yeah, yeah. but I there agree. is like a. You, you do still have. Um, standards in industry, so like you can see, like you can look at. Uh, at a piece of art and, and compare it to all the other I similar th- types of art and, yeah. and and see what they're going for and sometimes yeah there's a big discrepancy in price there's a lot of uh there's a lot of favors done through artwork yeah so imagine imagine for yeah. a second that i can't legally give you money right and this yeah. is hypothetical and this is the accusation it's not been proven obviously it's virtually impossible to prove but if legally i can't give you money but you're an artist uh part-time you you do all these other things but you also have some art and you've got a uh, finger painting that I think I'm going to buy for a million dollars, right? Or yeah. half a million dollars. And I can legally buy that from you, and that's I, I've ex- I've have a legal exchange of services. I've not violated any political or any other criminal law, right? It's the mm-hmm. way uh, it's the way uh, weed works in D.C. Yeah, there you go. I agree. It really <laughs> is. You're right. right. Like uh, I, I can't legally buy an yeah. ounce of weed in, in Washington, D.C., but what I can buy is a sticker, yep. and you can gift me some weed oh, behind okay, yeah. the purchase of that sticker. I've, got a, I've got a very uh, successful federal attorney that uh, he works for, lo- lo- does all kinds of cases, right? And that's exactly the example, very similar to that example he just gave me yesterday. In a kind of loophole kind of thing. Not well, really a loophole, no, no. but... What he says is, is that the crux of the case is how you operate your business, Right. Like the crux of the thing, the crux of the, the – you can sell stickers. You can yeah. sell artwork, right? And there's other things. Like uh, in other areas, I can legally, let's say, grow something, and I can legally gift it to you, right? I can't sell it to you. But what you can do is you can help cover my expenses, like for soil and lights and these other things, right? So, like, there, it's all in how you operate. So, mm-hmm. like, there's a clear legal way to do it's it. It's all consideration, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So, you know, so people use artwork – some, along with other things, as a way to possibly 
<laughs> avoid uh, consideration. Yeah, yeah. For that. So I mean, that's the only reason I'm here making podcasts, so people will give me a million dollars. Hey, <laughs> hey, I'm ready. I'm ready to sign you up. We need to create an NFT, that's and it's just him. And yeah. so if, 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 if the viewers <laughs> value this podcast, yes, yes. we can start a Patreon and... Yeah, yeah. Raise Eric's million dollars. Well, I just want to say, anybody who, you. anybody who donates uh, $5,000, I will send them a stick figure made out of actual sticks. Yes. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Uh, and I want to point out that you did. Is this real? You said he's going to cut his EBT card at 1,000 subscribers. <laughs> yeah. I want to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'll you do have it, a backup card, correct? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> Go ahead and put. It, go ahead and tell him you lost it. I'm not saying that on <laughs> film. But I'm just saying if you if you were to lose it, <laughs> it'll be like Hercules' hair or something. He'll try to cut it and it'll just yeah, break the scissors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was yeah. yeah. oh, Samson? What? It? Yeah, uh, yeah. No, Samson, Samson. She cut his hair. Oh, yeah, he lost his, hair. his power. Yeah, yeah and then he right, lost yeah. his power. But the, the Hercules, you just can't cut his hair. The, what are they called? The crones, the ladies. How does that, Superman have such a good haircut? I don't know. Krypton's got cool barbers. Get that sick fade on Krypton. There's no way they could cut his hair. Does he have to hold Kryptonite while he cut his hair? Kryptonite scissors? Oh, Oh, uh, there we go. There it is. But who makes those? Right. Lex Luthor, maybe. Maybe that's why he he cut his and he couldn't grow them back. Uh, Ah. Maybe. It brings a whole new Easter egg. Maybe Superman just has like... uh, like the grass that grows on greens, it only grows to a certain height. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like you can putt on his head or something. Yeah, when you're yeah. born mm. on Krypton, you are born with a good haircut, and uh. then it just stays whatever. Maybe you can change it. Uh, Seth's got a very Superman haircut. I agree. The front, the little Clark twirl Kent. in the front. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even mean to do this. I, I was going to comment happen. on your uh, thing earlier. It's very yes. 80s esque of you, too. Thank like, you, you know, I, when we were talking about Greece, I almost mentioned the little. The oh, little, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, was look thing. good. Thanks. Yeah. Seth has good hair. Yeah, that's nice. why we hired him. He just has great hair. That's, that's yeah. the only clip he's taken from the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Seth has good hair. Thanks. Seth has good hair, and uh, now we know why she swiped. Is it swipe left? Swipe right. right. Swipe yeah. right. Now we know why she swiped right. Yeah, I think I, I super see that liked profile. her too. I want to see that profile pic that you had that she liked. Do you have that? I think I do. I want to see it. Let's let's. It see. might be on Facebook. Let's see it because I think we need to superimpose that so everybody at home can see it too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can do that. I think mm. so. Toss it right up there in the middle. If you're, if you're there it is. Uh, let's see it. I didn't have this hair. I had curlier hair. Oh. I got to tell you. Huh? Hey. Huh? Hey. <laughs> That's funny. So. I see, I, I yeah. see you. I see you. Yeah, yeah. So we'll post that so people that are that are uh, just getting started, they, they know what to Yeah. Ladies, what to go he is for. taken. Yeah. Like this, this is what works. I don't know. There might be some people who see me like, I remember him on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> They swiped left. Yeah, yeah. swiped left, or I did not. Re- I did not reply back. So <laughs> yeah. you just need one. It did, so I just need one. That's that's yeah. so true. The right one. The, the right, right one. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Or not. I mean, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> depends on what your goal is. Yeah. No, I went on one date with Maisie, and I was like, I was like, oh, it's gonna be like a Tinder one, whatever. And then it was like, oh, okay. And then we both deleted the app. I think like a week later. So. Wow, I yeah. love it. That's cool. Um, I know a. I don't want to out her, but I'm going to. Uh, my nanny, one of our uh, my kids' nannies, um, she they was get, theirs was going to be like just a, I don't know if it's a hookup, but basically just a hookup. They yeah, agreed. It's casual date. Casual date. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah, casual date. They agreed, and you know now obviously she's going to the family weddings, and obviously mm-hmm. it was not a casual date. They're in like a full blown relationship. Yeah. But that's where they started. Was there was no intention to, you know, I think they both had gotten out of. Um, long relationships or uh, uh, what are they called serious relationships mm-hmm. and they were both just trying to recover from that and yeah like really bonding so that was pretty much the same thing so yeah i think it i think digital dating makes more sense than when we were younger i think it's better because you can you can uh sift through all the the things that definitely won't work mm-hmm. like you know it's, it's it's more you're finding people that are more compatible with you at least on the surface level and then you can meet and yeah i think it you know, like if you meet people in clubs and stuff, it's hard to speak. It's hard. True. You don't know anything about this person. And then yeah. you got to keep going to clubs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That too. Yeah. 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 And I mean, I, they like clubs. Yep. I'm married. Hopefully that'll, uh, it'll stay that way. And I don't have to deal with this any, anymore. But, <laughs> uh, and I don't know that I would if, 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 if I had to, but, um, but I think it makes more sense to me. Like I, I like the dynamic of it. And plus people are much busier today, I think than they used to be. I mean, yeah. Technology allows us to do so much more, mm-hmm. and I, I just can't imagine being young and then 
trying to date and stuff too. Yeah, yeah. I would just stay single. <laughs> Maybe. No, no, absolutely. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. Jessica, I've told Jessica for the for the rest of her life, she stuck with me. On some <laughs> level, whether we're together or not, she stuck with me. Well, you have three kids together. We have three kids <laughs> together. <laughs> There's that. We've been together for a long time. It's not gonna matter. Like I'm just, I just don't care. And I don't. I'm at a point where I'm not gonna deal with another woman. Mm. Not in my life, not in my house, not in my space. It's a lot like, of work. It's a ton of work, and I'm very. I, li- I like yeah. what I like. I think you could say you're at a place in your life where you're not gonna force another woman to deal with you. That's yeah, perfectly true. You That's probably very <laughs> accurate. Yeah. That's probably a much more accurate. I just don't want to deal with it. Again. And I kind of feel no, like it, I've done that one time, right? Like mm-hmm. I've got that person, and I'm just not cool. I'm just good. I'm just I'm fine. Like, yeah. I, I think you know if I was single. Really, what does that mean? It means I just live the same life I'm already living. I work all the time. Yeah. I spend time with my kids, and I've got this rule: don't don't hate me out there. But I can sleep with Jessica for the rest of her life when I want to. Like that's her and I have this like thing. I think it's the way it's going to work. She's like, well, she jokes. Well, what about what would my husband think about that? I was like, well, first of all, you're not allowed to get married again. Huh. Secondly, I don't give a shit what your husband thinks about it. <laughs> I, I'm happy in my marriage. I I, I love my wife. Yep. Tremendously, and I think we have a good relationship. Uh, I mean, clearly we have issues occasionally, but uh, I, I if if something happened in our relationship, I I wouldn't. I don't think I'd want to get remarried because yeah. I, it's like I'm at 41. It's it, you're you're a, a fully developed human. I mean, mm-hmm. you're constantly growing yeah. and trying to improve and, and learning and stuff. But at the same time, it'd be so difficult to just go through the whole thing. Uh, yeah. you know, relearn about someone else and what yeah. they like and try to, uh, you know, adapt your life to, to be more compliant with their life. And it's just, at, when you're young, it's, 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 it's not that big of a deal. But yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. I mean, it's like, exciting. Oh, yeah. New people and give it 10 more years. <laughs> but it, yeah. Not, not in your relationship. I'm it saying wouldn't be, it won't be as exciting then. Like you won't want to meet more people. I'm trying to watch no, my I story. My, my, circles get, my circles get smaller. Not yeah. Kinda. Well, dude, no. it's awesome having you in the studio, man. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, Really impressed with what you're what you're doing, and thanks. I think we all are, and you're a fun fun dude to hang out with. Off yeah, man. I, I you know we, I, I think we kind of hit the lottery a little bit. I agree. Uh, yeah. As far as you know, making the things that you guys want to make and yeah. making the the ideas that I have uh, that I've wanted to make for a very long time. I, I, I don't think uh, I would be making anything uh, without Seth right now. He's he's got a real skill and knack for uh, I agree. making my brain pictures uh, turn into actual pictures. And, and for the record, like that. Uh, since the first time we brought you in and saw some of your stuff, I believed in you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, 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 I just want to let you know, I had to eventually learn your name and add you on IG and everything because <laughs> I think what was going on was I had my guard up. I was like, ah, I'm, just, I'm just not sure. Yeah. And then I was like, holy shit, this guy's, this guy's exactly – what we've been missing. Yeah. Hell yeah. And that's not to detract from anybody else. No, no, it yeah, just, not at all. Yeah. It just is like when something fits, it fits. Yeah. And you go, wait a second, how did we, like you just, you know, you know, just like, it's like, it's You're like the right epiphany. Guy for the job. It was yeah. it's perfect. Well, yeah. I remember like we were at the next, uh, next door, uh, next door bar. Yeah. And he was talking about like looking for, they're trying to like, have a studio and they're looking for editing editors. And I wanted to do more of that. And Maisie was beside me. She just started punching my stomach. I was like, Talk well, yourself a, up. A few days earlier, I had uh, uttered the words right here in the studio. I said, I just want to meet somebody who tells me I love editing. Say that <laughs> sentence, <laughs> I love editing. Yeah. Uh, seriously. Yeah, and, yeah. and then we were at the, I, I, I asked to meet him and Maisie. Uh, I told him I'd buy him a drink, and they came out. And unprompted, he was just like, wow, I, I, just, I just love editing. I was like, oh. <laughs> well, also. My, my dick moved a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Extra homo. Extra, Extra homo. Well, also, uh, <laughs> you, you told me after one of the mics, you were like, did you hear that, that Seth guy? And I, I missed something you said. And he's like, he said during his set that he loves editing. <laughs> yeah, and he worked in news. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah. I was like, oh, that's It's just that's really awesome. cool, especially with all the weird stuff I'm trying to, yeah. trying to make. It, you know, yeah. having an extra set of. You know, and I, I think one of the things that I underestimated was his uh, creativity. You know, I knew that he was yeah. capable of doing things, but uh, add the creativity to it, and it's 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 been oh, a really thanks, nice yeah. thing. Right? Yeah, yep. I agree. Hell yeah! Awesome. We should do this more. You guys just say nice things about yeah. 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 come on the, the, the show. Yeah. 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 We swipe right, creative. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. Absolutely. Well, dude, it's awesome having you on the team. Definitely. And, uh, thanks. I'm, I'm, Sure, everyone that watches our stuff will enjoy what you do, and 
and uh, look forward to what we're going to do in the future. Yeah, more yeah. to come. So, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you, if you did, be sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you next week. Later, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.